by the end of this video, you're gonna have an easy to follow step-by-step -step guide on how to edit videos for YouTube. Now this method will work with any editor, but I'll be using CapCut as it's free on iPhone and Android, and it's also free on PC and Mac. And you know I hate long intros, so let's just dive into this video. Step number one is trim and split. So the first thing you wanna do is get all your footage that you are going to be editing and just drop it into timeline in order. So for me as an educator, I just click record, say my stuff, click stop recording, and that's all that's gonna be there. If you're shooting a vlog or you've taken shots in multiple different locations, just try to add them into the timeline in the order that you want them to be. Now, once all your clips are in there, the next part is trimming and splitting our clips. So for me, I want to cut out all the parts where I'm not talking, I'm just looking around and I'm not speaking, and just the parts where I can see these audio bumps where I am actually talking. So I'm gonna grab the playhead and drag right up to where I'm about to start speaking which it looks like right about there. And then I want to trim this clip and delete the part that nothing's going on. There we go. And then I also want to trim at the end of when I'm done talking. And then I can scroll to the next part where I'm about to start talking again. I can click the trim button or the command for it. And then I can delete this other spot where there's nothing going on. Click delete and just keep repeating that process over and over, cutting out all the things I don't want in the video and leaving the parts that I actually want part of my video. And if you're looking at this video and you're like, I don't know how to trim or split or anything like that, I will have links in the description of the video to a free tutorial on CapCut for iPhone and Android and a free tutorial of it for PC and Mac so that way you can learn how to use the editor first and then you can kind of understand the framework that goes around it. So I will leave that linked below. Now, once you've gone through and you've trimmed and split all your clips together, I would go ahead and click the play button and just make sure that it's coherent and it makes sense and everything is lined up where you wanted it to be. Because for the next steps, we're going to be going through and adding a whole bunch of different things to make our video more engaging, starting with music. Now, you may know this already, but CapCut is owned by TikTok. And so if you use the music inside of CapCut for YouTube, you could get a copyright claim on your video or just get in trouble on YouTube in general. And honestly, if you're going to be taking YouTube seriously, I'd recommend getting a music subscription service like Epidemic Sound, which is a sponsor of this video. They have over 40,000 music tracks and over 90,000 sound effects that are safe to use anywhere online. And having that amount of tracks is important because the song you choose can really affect the mood of your video. For example, if I was to choose music like this, for my tutorials, it'd be kind of weird, baby. <laughs> With Epidemic Sound, it's easy to choose a genre of music you want and also the mood of music that you want, so that way you can find the right song that's going to fit well with your video. All I have to do is download the song, import it into CapCut, and drop it into the timeline, and boom, we have our music. Plans are really affordable starting at $10 a month if you choose the annual plan. And at the recording of this video, they are actually running a Cyber Week promotion where you can try them out free for two months with the link in the description instead of the normal 30 days. I've personally been using them for years and I can't recommend them enough. Again, that link will be in the description. And with music out of the way, let's go ahead and move on to step number three, which is the intro. And by intro, I just mean the first 30 seconds of your video. Not that you're actually going to have a little slide uh, that looks cool like a TV show. Like I'm just talking about the first 30 seconds of your video because that's gonna determine really if someone's gonna stay watching your video or if they're just going to leave because they didn't see the value in the video. And some of the things you'll wanna add in that first 30 seconds are things like text, B-roll, sound effects, uh, zoom-ins and jump cuts. Uh, and we'll get into all those and how to add those in, but at least in my head, when I'm editing a video, I take time for just the first 30 seconds is like a completely different edit than the rest of the video because I am hyper fixated on how do I make this first 30 seconds the best it can be and the most engaging. I'm basically treating that first 30 seconds like it's a YouTube short and I've gotta have as much engagement as possible and movement and different things in there to make people hooked in where they're like, oh wow, I really, there is value in this video. I'm gonna stick around and watch it and then I can kinda lax off on 
all the editing stuff. Now, just to give you an example of this, I pulled up one of my older videos that I did uh, how to do After Effects edits in CapCut, and this is the video, and this is the opening intro, and I usually edit in Final Cut Pro, not necessarily CapCut all the time. And just take a look at all the different things I've added in here. I've got my main video here on the bottom. I've got music going on just for the opening intro. I have sound effects down below, and these are whoosh sound effects because up above, as you can see on screen, I have these logos come sliding in with transitions. And then I also have another logo come sliding in from the transition. And there's also a zoom in going on while I am talking. So you can see there's a zoom in going on and those are showing. And then it switches to B-roll of my screen recordings and I'm flashing through all the different effects someone can learn. And then we have another zoom out happening. So there is more movement going on that I've added inside the editor. And then I have this slide on screen to kind of show each individual effect that I'm talking about. And that's a lot of editing work. And as you can see, this is just 20 seconds in and I've done a ton of editing here. So with that being said, let's cover each of these different elements that you can add to your video to make your YouTube video better. Now, the first one you can implement is text. This is super easy to do. Obviously most editors, you can just click on text, click add text in. And one of the main things I look for when adding text to a video is what can I highlight? As you can see, I just highlighted the, the, by my point there. So having things like that, when you are making a point or you are bringing something up that you really want to highlight, having text appear on screen is a great way to do that. Now, one thing I do like to do with my text is to add an animation or a transition to the text. So that way there is movement when the text comes on screen and when it leaves. So here's a very simple blur, right? So let's click on that. And then for the out animation, I'm just gonna do like a simple dissolve. So now we have something like this. Here are three things to help you grow your YouTube channel. Tip number one, you could also use things like auto captions if you want. CapCut has free auto captions. I know there's other services out there as well to where if you wanted, you could just have captions going on screen the entire time to help increase engagement. This is optional. Not a lot of long form content usually has the auto captions going the whole time. It's usually a short form thing. But if that video is shorter or maybe someone's hard to understand, it may be a good idea to add those auto captions in. After adding things like text, the next thing I look to add is B-roll. And basically what B-roll is, is the clip clips that exist above your video. So let's say you're a real estate agent and you're talking about a house and you're like, so here's this video of this house that I'm selling for this amount of money. That clip playing over the top is your B roll while your main video, which is called your A roll, you're just talking, you're on camera, uh, but you're showing those videos on screen. A great website and mobile app that I use for this is Pexels, which is free stock videos and photos. So I could just search something like house tour, and I'm gonna get a whole bunch of different videos of houses and things like that that I can add in. So here I can preview it. This will probably work great for, for, for this video. I can click free download and I can also choose the size, which I'll just choose a lower resolution here of 720p. Download selected size, boom, I've got that stock footage. And then inside of CapCut, I can go to media, I'm gonna import it in, and then I can just drag and drop it over the top of my video clip. And now it is added in as a layer here. So because this is on top of the video, when we get to that part in the video, it's going to display that video. And then I can also trim it to however long I want. So maybe just to the end of this clip. And then when we get to the next clip, it goes back to normal. And what I like to do is watch my video and I just think, where can I add stock footage? If there's ever a space where I can add stock footage, I'm going to add it because it's different camera angles. The viewer is seeing different things and it's not just a straight talking video. There is different segments going on and different clips that helps make the video more engaging. So watch through your video and think, okay, where can I add stock footage here? If I say a certain phrase like, it may be frustrating if you're going through that situation, I should look for stock footage of someone frustrated and add that to my project. So as many places as you can add stock footage, try to add that in. Quick little bonus tip as it relates to B-roll, and this is a bit of a, an advanced tip, but if you can, Film yourself in the B-roll. So set up your, your phone or your, your camera or whatever and film out the B-roll part. So for example, uh, let's say you're on your computer and like in your video, you're like, so I was online looking up this thing. Actually record yourself 
looking up that thing on your computer. See, you have this video of you like researching on your computer and you're showing people the story instead of just telling them the story. So I think that's the key. Don't just tell people, show people things because this is a video medium type thing. So a little bonus tip there. Let's get back to the video. Next, let's talk about zoom ins and jump cuts. And this one is really easy to implement. So in your timeline, you're going to have a whole bunch of different clips of the different talking segments that you have. What a jump cut is, to me at least, is when you get to that next clip, there's a bit of a zoom in. So for the second clip here, what I'm actually gonna do is go to scale or basically just zoom in the video a bit and I'll drag it to where I'm still lined up. And now when I click play over here, this is what we get. Here are three things to help you grow your YouTube channel. Tip number one is to think about- So as you can see, it did a little jump cut in. We did a little zoom in and that just gives us a different camera angle from the previous scene. So we had this, then it jumps in and zooms in a bit and that can cause more engagement because it's not just a stale video. There is some movement happening, some kind of different camera angle going on. The only two rules with this is you don't want it to be too dramatic of a zoom in. In my opinion, you want it just to be a slight zoom in. So it's not too, I guess you could say jarring where it's like doo, 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 like crazy. And also it sometimes looks better if you can keep your eyes in the same spot on screen. So as you can see, my eyes haven't moved too much from the zoom in that can also help it not be so so jarring and what i'll do is throughout my video i will sprinkle those in i won't do it too much but i will sprinkle in the different jump cuts where i'm zoomed in a bit more and then i'll zoom back out and i'll zoom back in uh, but don't do it too much otherwise it'll be a little too much for viewers so just every so often throughout the video have a little jump cut happen if there's a really long period of time where you're just talking and there's nothing going on screen. Now the other trick is something called a zoom in or a zoom out. And basically what you're doing with this is with the video clip selected, you wanna add keyframes and do a keyframe zoom in. So basically what I do is with the video selected, I'm going to select the keyframe for the position and size. Then I'm gonna to scroll to the end of the video where it ends and I'm going to do the zoom in at the end of the video, the first video clip. So let's say that's our ending spot. Now, because we placed keyframes, when we click play, it's going to do a little zoom in. Here are three things to help you grow your YouTube channel. And I literally use this trick all the time in my videos because just having that little movement as you're seeing right now can really help the video actually seem like there's a lot more going on than there really is. You can also do the reverse of this effect. As you can see, now it's doing a slow zoom out. You could also do this as well. And again, sprinkle this through your video. You don't want to have it everywhere, but it is something that can definitely help your videos seem more engaging than just a straight up talking head video. And the last step is sound effects. And this one, you might seem like it's not going to add a lot to the video, but by doing this, you can actually really up the professional professionalism of your different effects. So for example, if you have text that slides on screen and slides off, adding a whoosh sound effect as it comes on screen makes it seem way more professional than if it just slid on screen without there being a sound effect. So by adding sound effects in for those transitions, it just makes it seem way more professional. The same goes if text appears on screen, B-roll, uh, all those different elements, stickers, if you end up adding those. We didn't talk about stickers really in this video, not super important, but maybe you put a photo up as an overlay, adding a sound effect for that. Or if you want to be comedic, adding different comedic sound effects in also works. And if you're needing to find sound effects, again, Epidemic Sound, they've got over 90,000 sound effects, so you can find a sound effect for whatever you're looking for uh, with them as well. And with my video, I'll just go through, slowly add each of those elements in, and then once I get to the end of the video, I'm done. I have a video where I've trimmed it all together, I've added my different assets like music and text and B-roll and all that other stuff, and now I have a much more engaging video that's going to help me grow my channel. And speaking of growing your channel, there are two things you should check out. Number one, linked in the description is my channel growth accelerator, where I'll show you exactly how to grow a successful YouTube channel. Or if you're looking for just other free videos you can watch here on YouTube, be sure to check out this playlist as I'll have some other YouTube tips videos to help you do better on YouTube. So hope to see you at either one of those.